The Milwaukee LGBT Community Center was pleased to be a part of the Stonewall National Archives exhibits. And this exhibit that we'll be looking at today is focused on the Harlem Renaissance and focused on um, how non-heterosexual people were integral in this big social movement that happened in the 1920s. One of the things to, to know about the context of how the Harlem Renaissance starts is that in the summer, well actually the whole year of 1919, there were a series of, of riots and lynchings that happened uh, throughout the United States, most violent in the South. Over 250 people were killed, African American people were killed. They called this the Red Summer, and it was not called the Red Summer because of bloodshed or uh, the violence that happened. It was called the Red Summer because the United States government blamed African Americans for the violence that happened against their communities in 1919. It was red because they believed that it was communist agitations, that it was socialism that was influencing uh, kind of black activism, but really this was kind of uh, people that came back from World War One that said, hey, we don't have voting rights, we don't have economic freedoms, we do not have the things that this country is peddling on the global scale, right? Uh, there's all this kind of grand... Uh, platform of the United States as being um, this beacon of liberty and hope and uh, self-determination. And African American people are saying, wait a minute, that doesn't really necessarily apply to us. So there were several peaceful protests, there were several uh, renegotiations of sharecropping contracts, uh, different groups formed collectives. And uh, they were violently suppressed. Uh, so this kind of creates this moment where a lot of people say, we can't live in some of these areas. We can't live in, in parts of the South anymore. And they moved to places like Harlem. And Harlem was originally designed to be a wealthy, white-only neighborhood. And it became a really economically diverse black neighborhood. And people from all over started to come to Harlem. And then imagine a life that's not influenced by the white majority way of thinking. That it was a, a way to kind of just have a community and a place of self-determination for black people. And then all of this kind of starts to blossom in a really big way. If you really want to play, these cats set aside a day. Grab your desk and come and meet the Juneteenth Jamboree. Man, they really pitch a ball. Go to wigs and jobs and all. Everything is strictly free. The Juneteenth Jamboree. So one of the contexts to think about in the 1920s of just how radical things are changing is to think about women's dress and how much that radically changes in the 1920s. It goes from kind of a corseted, stuffy, um, Edwardian period, cumbersome women's costume to a very loose cut, uh, androgynous, 
uh, look. It's a very kind of streamlined square look. And this is like, people think that, oh, well, it's just, it's just a dress, but this is a huge change because it also signals a change in uh, kind of women's bodies and how they're interacting with the world. They're not, they're not restricted, it's loose, there's dancing, there's socializing, there's going out, there's working. All of these things happen and all of these things change. Women's hair changes from these very cumbersome, elaborate, like bun type things to simple bobs, to Marcel waves. All of this changes and this is all signaling kind of this this movement of, of women out of the world. Gladys Bentley is an interesting character, uh, a very out lesbian. Uh, she used to perform in this amazing tuxedo with backup dancers of like 20 to 30 drag queens. She operated and owned a club called the Clam House that was very queer. Um, this was kind of the general theme of all Harlem nightlife is that there was an infusion through all pieces of queer people of not hetero kind of normative structures that we would think about today. Things were very, very fluid. One of the things to kind of know about the 1920s is that there's a huge explosion of sexual liberation that's happening. Heterosexuality is kind of invented for the first time. So is kind of this idea of um, female sexuality, breaking away from the confines of this Edwardian marriage and family, kind of not having any pleasures in, in sex, all of this kind of thing gets thrown out, thrown out the window. There's just an explosion of, of fun and exploration and kind of creating one's own identity. Uh, so when, when coming out is now in the lexicon of this thing where, you know, you, you come out of the closet, you, back then it meant, it started back then, and that meant that you were going out into the nightlife. You're going out into these places where other people are gathered. Really, people did not care what their, what their co-workers knew of their, of their sexual orientation, their family, whatever. That, that didn't really necessarily matter. In fact, we almost pity you. You act from fear. Why should that be? What is it that you are frightened of? The way that we dress, the way that we meet, the fact that you cannot destroy our love. We're going to win our rights to lavender days and nights. Not afraid to be queer and different. If that means hell, well, hell will take the chance. They're all so straight up, tight up, right and rigid. They march in lockstep, we prefer to dance. We can see a world of romance and a pleasure. All they can see is sheer banality. Lavender nights are our greatest treasure. Where we can be just who we are. So this is also the era of prohibition, but Harlem is kind of running illegally, these kind of, and legally, these kind of uh, speakeasies and nightclubs and, and, and all this kind of blossoming of, of nightlife and entertainment hap starts to happen. Uh, the pansy craze that kind of still lasted a little bit into the 1930s. Where, where people in New York, especially of all demographics, were very, very interested in drag queens and drag performances. There were huge drag balls that attracted thousands of people. And what you see is these wealthy people, like Rockefeller types, 
that are coming to see drag performances. They are also really interested in seeing nightlife in Harlem. The Cotton Club is one club that is specifically designed for these kind of wealthy white kind of tourists. But other places are integrated and other places aren't really too concerned about, uh, you know, tourists coming into the city. When I was last night, had a good big fight, everything seemed to go all around. I looked up to my surprise, the gal I Music in this time changes very dramatically from the most risque dance in the late 1800s is the waltz, and then it it really changes to like the Charleston different dances, these jazz dances. kind of creates modern music in a lot of ways. It, it shifts from these, these formal dance type musics and some popular song ballads to this kind of more expressionistic music that we have today. Jazz kind of influences all, all music up until this point. It all kind of blends and has this kind of this start piece of how American popular music starts right here in the Jazz Age. Down last week, she came from the island of Martinique. The can can she dances will make you fry. The can can is really the reason why we're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. The temperature's rising, it isn't surprising, she certainly can, can, can. She started the heat wave by letting her seat wave. And in such a way that the customers say that she certainly can, can, can. She her anatomy made the mercury. Jump tonight. After Prohibition is repealed, none of these establishments can get liquor license to continue to operate. Uh, both gay bars and uh, 
black owned businesses are, are targeted and excluded from, from these. Uh, they're not considered wholesome establishments. This has a direct effect leading up into places like Stonewall, where liquor license for gay bars are, are being run through the mafia. So it's starting to chip away at economic self-empowerment. Uh, the Great Depression happens. Most African Americans are excluded from work programs, from business loans. They're racist and continue to this day.